Hello, I'm Dr. Oswald Cobblepot. Welcome to the BBC, and welcome to the study of Georges Millet's A Trip to the Moon. The following feature will be narrated by my cousin from across the pond. That cousin's name is Casper Austin. He's done a lot of research on this subject, and he is genius. I take you now to our feature, and away to my cousin. In 1902, everyone was astonished by amazing new moving pictures seen on the silver screen. The first decade of the 1900s was a significant time for the burgeoning new medium of film. Georges Millet went boldly where no man had gone before. Already an accomplished filmmaker, he decided to make the jump into a new genre for the silver screen. That genre was science fiction. Millet began making films in May 1896, and according to French historian Jacques Malti, he produced 80 films that year. In 1902, Millet released A Trip to the Moon, or Les Voyages dans la Lune. The movie itself was very fantastical, and only 14 minutes in length. However, in that 14 minutes, Millet manages to capture something very special. Millet's pioneering use of cinematography and studio effects made the film a visual wonder, and the film still holds up today as an amazing piece of cinematic history. In reference to Millet's process, writer Juan Gonzalez states, In Montreux, he built a humorous combination of realism and artistic trickery for Le Voyage dans la Lune where physical space and time became fantasy through hand-painted sets and props, the meaningful junction of the different shots and rudimentary special effects, designing scenes for the camera and using optical illusions of cutting, fading, and dissolving against the dictatorial nature, order provided what seen and unseen meant on screen, among other surprising dramatic effects like the substitution splice. Millet's films very much moved away from the standard silver screen fare of the day. Tallou states that Georges Millet is certainly one of the most important and oft-discussed figures of early film history, in a large part because of the way his works pushed beyond the initial cinematic impulse to record and represent reality. In addition to making the first sci-fi film, Millet also accomplished two other firsts. Brian Jacobson states, in France, Georges Millet came to the forefront of the cinema's initial forays into architecture. In 1897, he built the first French film studio at his family's estate in the Parisian suburb of montreux sur bois While the studio was not, as Millet would later claim, the first studio in the world, it was the first example of the glasshouse style of film studio that would dominate studio production before World War I. These days in movies, and especially in science fiction films, everything is CGI. We need to be able to look back fondly on what our forefathers of film did with no computer graphics, just what they were able to accomplish with good old-fashioned manpower, genius set design, acting, and camera work. Watch the film La Voyage dans la Lune, and you will surely be amazed. I know I